Hi everybody, it's Michael and today I want to do something a little bit different. The thing is, I want to show you Village Inn, but I've already done a walkthrough of Village, the base game, about a year ago. And I thought it doesn't make too much sense if I just do another walkthrough now with the expansion. And so, today I'm doing what I'd like to call an expansion overview. So basically I'll show you what's inside the box, what kind of components you get, what they do, and basically what changes in comparison to the base game. But before we start, let me just give you some more facts. So this is of course an expansion to Village, it's the first expansion. So it's now 2 to 5 players, they've added another player. The playing time now says 60 to 120 minutes, it was 60 to 90 before, and it's still ages 12 and up. So this is everything that comes with the expansion. And if you just want to use the expansion to add a fifth player, then you have a new homestead in grey. You have discs, family members, and you have a couple of extra coins, grain markers and influence cubes, which you can just add to the supply from the base game so you never run out. Then of course you have a new setup card for five players for seeding the board with the influence cubes each round. And then finally you have a new set of anonymous graves and a new chronicle. And you just put those over their older counterparts and note how the jacket edges fit smoothly around the scoring track. And then you basically already set to use this as an expansion for fifth player. On the other side, if you want to use the new materials from the expansion, you take the Chronicle and the Anonymous Graves and put them into their frames. And just place them beneath the board because their old spaces will be taken up by the brewery and the inn. Then you have some new setup tiles, this time with a foaming mug of beer. Then you have a new type of good, uh, beer and each player starts with one of these tokens. Next up are four new customers and they are just added to the ones from the base game and all of these want the new beer in some kind of way. And finally you have a stack of cards, these strangers that players can meet at the inn and these are randomly separated into three different piles which are shuffled and then placed face up next to the inn. So what do the new buildings do? First the brewery is, as you can see from the yellow shield, also a crafting building. That means you have to remove a cube from this action space here to actually use it. You can send an apprentice here for three time and then with another three time produce two kegs of beer or alternatively you can just spend three bags of grain and since it's a crafting building if somebody should die while working there of course he gets into the craftsman area of the village chronicle. The inn on the other hand has a new action space that is associated with it. You can send someone there, it costs one time. It's not really an apprenticeship that you're doing here. The inn doesn't have a crest and no color associated, so whoever dies while sitting in the inn is just put into an anonymous grave. And once you've sent somebody there for one time, you can spend another time to hire a stranger. As I said before, the strangers are separated into three stacks. And first of all, what you have to do is take the top card of one of the three stacks and just put it underneath. And then you can hire any of the three top cards for their price, which is one beer, two beer, or a coin. And the strangers give you special abilities either during or after the game. And let's just take a look at some of these abilities now. First, let's take a look at the strangers with the burnt out candle down here. Those are the ones that give you extra points at the end of the game. The first category for these are the guildmaster, the nun, the scholar and the mayor. And they reward you if you have a certain amount of certain influence cubes left at the end of the game. So for example, the mayor is interested in the green charisma cubes. And if you have one left, that's two points and then four and then six for three. But the interesting thing is, if you have four or more, you don't get anything. The next category are the Traveler and the Artist, which give you better ratio for certain endgame scoring things. The Traveler gives you a better rate for your visited cities. So for example, in this case, for six visited cities, you get 25 points, whereas it's normally only 18. And the Artist gives you a better ratio for your characters and the City Chronicle. So for example, for six characters, you get 21 points. Then we have the Cut Purse, who is triggered after you've scored everything else. If you're the last player at this point, you get six points. In another case, you get 
three points. And then finally we have four characters that give you points for various things at the end of the game that don't score otherwise. The Count gives you an additional two points for each of the three castles you can visit. So basically this one, this one and this one. The Peasant Woman gives you one point for each bag of grain that you've left. The Mansible gives you two points for each kind of good that you've left at the end of the game, so maximum of 12. And the Medico gives you one point for each person that's still alive at the end of the game. Then we have the ones where the candle is still burning. And basically you keep those cards until you play them for a one-time effect and after that they're gone. So for example the blacksmith gives you two plows. The cattle breeder gives you either an oxen or a horse. The scribe gives you two scrolls. And the wagon maker gives you a wagon. The lost son gives you three points and lets you perform a family action. So basically you get a new family member. The messenger lets you place a travel disc, although you haven't traveled to that particular location. The farmhand lets you refill all your grain and gives you two points. And the abbot lets you advance one family member in the church to the best position. The councilman gives you twice the appropriate privilege for one of your members in the town council. The noblewoman lets you pick one of the character cards from any of the three stacks for free and also gives you two points. And the herb woman lets you place your time disc either on the space right to the bridge, so giving you more time until somebody dies, or left to the bridge, basically meaning that somebody will die very soon. And then finally we have a couple of character cards that give you one-time benefit but only under certain circumstances. For example, the scrap dealer lets you, once the market day is over, get one of the remaining customers for free. You don't have to provide what they need and you can just place it with the other customers. When you convert grain into money, normally you get two coins, but if you play the miller at that point, then you get five. And the bard lets you, at the point where a family member of yours dies, enter it into the chronicle, not taking up any space there, but it's in the chronicle, so it gives you points. The Barker, when you play him at the start of market day, he allows you to serve not only the customers in front of the stalls, but also the ones waiting in line. The priest lets you determine which four family members are drawn from the back when a mass is being held. And the gatekeeper lets you ignore the travel costs when you travel to another city. So basically you don't have to pay time, wagons or any of the skill cubes. The juggler lets you perform a second action once your first action is over, but you have to pay for the second action by the normal means, so either take one cube from one of the action spaces or pay three cubes of the same kind. And the old man gives you three points and then you can perform any action you like without having to take action cubes or paying three cubes of the same kind. So I hope you enjoyed this short overview over Village Inn, the things that you get in the box. Hopefully you now know whether this could be interesting for you, either just for the fifth player or also for the stuff that comes with the expansion. Personally, I think it's worth it because it adds a lot to the game, both in terms of complexity and also replayability. So I guess that's already it. Thanks for watching, until next time, and bye bye.